Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, my name is Kristen. I will be with you guys um, today and get to listen in on Allison's webinar as well. So um, we're excited to hear Allison today and I'll let her introduce herself here in just a few minutes. I just wanted to kind of go over just a few quick housekeeping items. So I would encourage um, you all to mute your microphones if you haven't already and that way there's no um, interruptions while Allison is presenting. Also, um, we will have this posted on our website, the slide deck for this uh, on our website, so you can get that at cpshr.us. And then we're also recording today's session so that the recording of this webinar will be available on our website um, after we're finished as well. Um, so I think that's it, and I will let Allison go ahead and get started and introduce herself. Cool, thank you. So thanks for being here, everyone. We're going to cover in 30 minutes, three tips for pitch perfect communication in a virtual world. And um, this is in a way a kind of promotional. There is a full day class on this topic, but I tried to um, grab, it's really more than three tips, I'll just tell you. But anyway, we're calling it three tips. You're gonna get more than that. But um, you know, I tried to kind of distill some of the really what I felt were important points from the larger class into this webinar for you today. So um, I'm not that into introductions. I am a an instructor for CPS HR. Uh, I really enjoy my job. I've been a trainer for a little bit more than eight years now. Uh, my background is that I have a bachelor's in communication and um, I, I'm an attorney. I'm licensed in California and Oregon. So that's my background. Um, I left, I'm an active member of the bar, but I left that behind more than eight years ago now and people have mixed reactions to that, but I'll just say, haven't regretted that decision. Okay, so let's jump into it. Here are the three main areas that we're going to discuss today. First, we're going to talk about preparing for effective communication. And that may sound a little bit strange, but just like getting in the right mindset before we make um, a choice about how we're going to communicate now that we're not having as many, maybe no, ver uh, excuse me, in person exchanges with folks. So we have a lot of options. But I'm going for the purposes of this webinar, I'm going under the assumption that, you know, in person is off the table. And so now we're talking about what should we be thinking about before we start emailing or having a video conference or whatever. And then I'm going to focus on two of those channels. The first one is the, the video meeting, video conferencing, having a Zoom call, being on a webinar like this, whatever, um, and trying to inject a little bit more emotional intelligence into those meetings. And then the last thing we will quickly discuss is a little bit about email. Um, I know at least one person uh, shared with me in the chat that they've had me as an instructor before. Um, my, I, I really, um, you know, everyone's passionate about something these days, but anyway, I am passionate about business writing and communication and leadership and that's that's kind of my ballywick so um i i do have some very specific practical advice for some things to think about when we email all right so let's jump in if you'd like to share in the chat you can it looks like there are 218 of us so i'm not going to claim that i can read 218 comments but i like to have some interaction even if it's only for 30 minutes you know, even if we only have 30 minutes together. So I have this question on the screen right now. What are your biggest challenges with virtual communication? So just do it like a quick self self reflection. And if you are comfortable, a one sentence response to that since we'll just say March of last year, what do you feel like you have struggled with the most? And I'll I'll take a look at a few of them as they start coming in. Thank you so much for um, participating in that way. Okay, staying focused, other people not using their cameras, feeling comfortable speaking up. All right, lack of response, right? Like we're, we're not having all this body language or not as much body language, especially if people don't have their cameras on, we're getting none, so we can't really like reflect back to people. Okay, pauses, unclear, lack of response. 
everyone talking at once. And I think I think there is data behind this. I'm sure there's going to be like t-shirts and mugs or whatever, but like most commonly uttered phrase in 2020 was you're on mute. <laughs> you know, so it's just like, uh, okay, so many frustrations, technical challenges, right? Background distractions, absolutely. It's either trash day, gardening day, your kids, your pets, you're getting an Amazon package, right? I mean, there's just so many things that that we've had to deal with and um, I'm sure we're we're all you know doing our best, but I know some days I feel a little more drained than others trying to kind of keep my chin up. So um, thank you, and if you're still typing, please submit it. I am going to forward my slide just to be mindful of the time. So there are, have been a lot of studies in the last ten months about remote work, and and I mean you know before before March, but we're I'm mostly focused on more recent data. This, um, the data that's on this slide, you can see the reference at the bottom where I got it. But I think most of us would agree there are some things that are similar, but you know, it's kind of a different ball game now with communication. And I, I found these, I'm gonna put up two data points. This is the first one um, that, that I think we need to kind of intake and really think about how are we, how are we experiencing communication and then what's our obligation to the other people on our team or you know our customers clients whatever the first one is maintaining meaningful connection with other humans was reported as the number one challenge um, from by the people in this survey at least so that idea of connection we ha may have thought of ourselves as introverts loners you know, whatever, but I think a lot of people have said, I'm still an introvert, but, but I didn't maybe realize how important even just the, you know, the hi, hi, Betty, hi, Mark, you know, those little two second exchanges that happened in the hallway, like how much those kind of buoyed me throughout the day and now they're missing. Um, and then this one I thought was especially troubling employees with three years or less at the organization reported an 80 percent decrease in connection with their colleagues so i think that's if we want to say like okay where's one place that i could make a difference think about who's newest on your team or who your newest client is or something like that and make sure we're having those it can be kind of informal casual but are you connecting with them in some way so I, I thought that was really interesting and something I'm trying to work on myself and be better about. So again, this key word from these two data points is connection. And so we need to think about, is that something we're needing? And then is it something that the people around us are needing from us? Okay. So specifically about preparing before we communicate, where does our headspace need to be? And I think one way of doing this, at least, is being very intentional with, with this question. Which communication channel is most appropriate for each situation? I know what my default is, and it's email. It doesn't mean I don't sometimes pick up the phone, but I just am like, okay, there's so many great things. It's fast. It's easy. I have a paper trail, right? Um, but that's not always the best channel. So let's look at four different channels. We, you know, you could argue there are more than these, but these are the four I chose to focus on. The first one at the top there is calling someone on the phone. Then I put the computer screen for email, then the phone for texting, and then the webcam for having some kind of a video conference. So let's just quickly look. Of course, the list is longer than this. I just did two pros and cons for each just to and and if you are like i don't really agree with that then cool you know you could put that in the chat if you care to whatever um th these are what i see as some pros and cons so calling someone on the phone i think you get you know more empathy that way it seems more authentic you can ensure that your message is reaching the receiver better um, like, do you have any questions? You know, what questions can I answer about what I just said? And you get that like in the moment response. Now, of course, you got to catch someone on the phone uh, who's, you know, you have to find someone who's willing to pick up. <laughs> I think a lot of us are, are very into screening. Um, I know 
usually if I don't recognize the number, it's rare that I pick up. And then also phone calls are not as quick. They tend to be a little bit more prolonged. Okay. So there are others, but there we go. Couple of pros and cons for email. You have that paper trail and it's very fast and efficient. Downsides. It's very hard to convey empathy because there's none of this involved, right? There's no body language, facial expressions, whatever. It's just words, black ink on a white screen. And then when I say censored, what I mean is theoretically, you had an infinite amount of time to compose this. So I, I'm, of course, I believe in writing an email and checking it for grammar and tone and things like that. But the longer you have with it, arguably the staler, <laughs> it gets the more overly censored and perhaps less genuine it is okay yeah laura i see your comment i know there's been a lot of comments but yeah reply all Ugh. yes don't get me started laura on reply all. no i'm just kidding <laughs> okay so now with texting that i'd say that's our most informal form of business communication and it may be off the table for some of you like just you know some people have the boundary like i do not expect a work colleague to text me like no you're you're in my space now you know that's that it's like you showed up on my doorstep or whatever at home um but it i'd say it's the most informal if you do use it um and it's quick it there's to me there's this unspoken like i need an answer now that's why i'm texting you um, it may not always work that way in your world, but there's kind of an immediacy with a text that maybe is not as much there with an email. Um, and the the last one there, it may feel invasive. That That's what I was referring to. Like, you know, some of us may have unstated or stated boundaries. That's like, if it's not a, a true emergency, do not text me. You know, like that's my, now you're in my private life. And then the last one is video conferencing. Um, oh, Laura, that's interesting. My younger employees respond well with text. Yeah, so there might be some generational differences there. Um, and, and sometimes it may seem like it's generational and it's really just personal preference. Okay, good. So with video conferencing, of course, we get visible body language and it's really easy to do screen share as I'm doing now and share documents and that's not you know, on a phone call that's off the table um, with an email, you're just attaching and you can't really guarantee that someone is looking exactly where you want them to look, et cetera. Um, probably, yeah, Barbara, I am through Microsoft Teams is another one that's maybe kind of the business texting equivalent. Okay, good. Um, of course, we've all experienced the tech issues with video conferencing. And then, you know, there is some amount of planning that has to be done. I know you can just like hop on Zoom or hop on Teams and kind of grab someone's attention. Um, there's the whole, you know, am I camera ready <laughs> and all that business. And so I think a little more prep goes into it. So I mostly have this slide just to raise our awareness that there are pros and cons to all of them. So are we considering that? Um, so we need to think strategically, and these are four questions that might help you pick the right communication tool. And this will be quick, but what am I trying to accomplish? Like, do I need an immediate answer? Am I trying to problem solve? Am I just doing a pulse check with my team? And like, I don't really even have an agenda. It's just more social or whatever, but you know, really asking yourself, what am I trying to accomplish with this interaction? Do I need an immediate response? You're gonna pick a different channel if you do. I, in my opinion, don't email if you need an immediate response. The person may be helping one of their remote at home learners for an hour or whatever. You know, that's more of a calling or a texting instant message situation perhaps. Is the, what is the message confidential or sensitive? You're gonna to want to think, do I want to even put this in writing? And then is there more than one person to communicate with? Don't make more work for yourself. Of course, with email, you could get to a lot of people with, you know, one, one strategy, one hit. Um, and so um, really think about, do I have to disseminate this message to a bunch of different people? Okay, so what's the best way to do that? What's the best use of my time and their time? Um, 
this is kind of a general way of interpreting the four questions. The more complex the task, the closer you should be to virtual in person. I, I just mean like, you know, face to face interaction and what i really mean by complex is like is there more at stake so the more that's at stake the more you're going to want to you know let people know it's happening have cameras on if possible so you can see not only see and hear not only words but the unspoken all right so Choosing the best method, this this is, I picked the three of the four we talked about. With email, of course, it's to push information in one direction quickly. With video conferencing, that's more probably what you would use to explore different perspectives. If it's complex, as I said already, if you're trying to problem solve with a group or negotiate something, you probably want the thing that most closely mimics an in-person interaction. And then with phone, this is a great way to, you know, talk about sensitive topics privately, um, and it can be more spontaneous than a video call. All right, so let's transition as our time is ticking away and talk about meetings. So we're gonna get more specific now, we're gonna talk about meetings and then we're gonna talk about email and that's the rest of our time together. So for meetings, probably what most of us struggle with, you may be having the struggle right at this moment, is managing our attention where where am i placing my attention right now and so this is from a infographic and i just have taken a couple of snips from the infographic it was done by a um, nonprofit community college group and um, so this is what they came up with for four of the main reasons we can't focus and um, the two on the left i would say are kind of like more personal stress and sleep deprivation are two of the main reasons why we have trouble focusing during meetings. And I would say whether virtual or in person, but especially virtual. And then the two on the right um, are more what I'm gonna focus on, this idea of multitasking and just like the stuff around us is busy. Like maybe our computer, our phone are busy. And also maybe there's another adult in your household who's also working or you have kids who are remote lear learners or pets who are needy or whatever. Um, and so how much of this can we control? Well, I, I'm not, again, I'm not gonna talk as much about the stuff, well, I'm not gonna talk any more about the stuff on the left, I'm just mentioning it. But for the stuff on the right, I have a few tips. So one thing is to turn off notifications. Maybe this is something you've heard people say a lot, I don't know. I finally did it myself probably a year and a half ago it was before the pandemic and i'm i'm not trying to be melodramatic it has changed my work life so what i specifically mean is outlook no longer nags me all day long i have no notifications about outlook turned on which means i never have anything visual or audio that is getting my attention and encouraging me to toggle over to Outlook. And I will tell you, that being said, I've never forgotten to check my email. I still check my email fairly frequently, but I have longer periods, and I'm talking not long, but longer, 10 or 20 minutes of actual focused work time. And it's a little hard to quantify because I work from home and you know I'm not I don't necessarily have the metrics, but I am positive I am much more focused and I get more done because I've turned on the notification. So um I'm just going to encourage you if you've never done this to be brave and try it, even if it's like commit to maybe two days or three days, like baby steps. And you can always turn it back on. If you're like, Allison, you don't understand the nature of my work and I can't do it. Try it like on a Friday or something, you know, where it would like whatever your typically least busy day is and just see how refreshing it is. <laughs> um, I, I can almost guarantee you, you'll like it. 
Um, the next one is more of a self care piece of advice. Take breaks. Look away from the screen, rest your eyes, um, get up and walk around. And you can do this if you're in an apartment, you know, or a house, or or maybe you're in an office, but you can get up. Fresh air is the best. That's, you know, the people who have studied this, getting up anywhere is good. Getting up and actually going outside psychologically is better and physiologically, um, okay? And then the last one is cut down on email. Now you may be thinking, well, I, I'm, you know, there's two parts to this. <laughs> there's how the people emailing me, and then there's the email, there's the emails I send. And so that's more what I'm gonna focus on as our last tip is when we think about the emails we send, how are we composing those? What are, where's our mind? And so um, there's some stats there. Americans spend much of their day checking email. I know that's not a shock to you. Um, and if you look at in the gold box there at the very bottom, just three of every 26 minutes spent responding to email or job related. So this is not a personal indictment. I just like you to maybe, you know, it's Friday, maybe just for the rest of the day, really think about every email that you look at is it work or not work related and just kind of ask yourself and um we don't have time to go into it many of you are familiar probably with this feature in word but consider setting up some message rules r-u-l-e-s if you're not familiar google it just put in microsoft you know ms outlook message rules in in google or youtube and learn a little bit about how you can control your inbox a little bit better. You can promote or demote certain emails. You can tell Outlook to put emails from certain people or with certain subject lines in a folder so it never even hits your inbox. It, I'm thinking like maybe a quarterly report that's circulated to everyone but you don't really care about or whatever, not because you're a bad person, but just like, okay, relevance zero okay so you could just have it go in a folder if you need it it's there it's not deleting it but you just don't have to manage it because it's never actually in your inbox it's a beautiful thing okay so we're going to talk in our last few minutes about emails so i gave you a tip just there for managing your email inbox this is just a little bit more of a of a specific a measurable statistic so in 2019 the average worker received 121 emails per day and sent about 40 and you may be saying oh i wish i only got 121 you know like in your world i don't know where what you know we all have our own personal experiences but my personal is lower than that I'd say mine is like 50 to 70 a day, but it's still, you know, resonating with me. And then I, I have to think about how many do I send? And did I really need to send all of those? Um, and I think probably all of us have experienced since the pandemic, the number of emails we're sending and receiving has gone up. So what I'd like you to think about for just a second, I have three golden rules for emailing and um, the first one is about receiving emails and then the other two are about sending. So the first one about receiving is always give, give others the benefit of the doubt. And we can kind of give lip service to that and go, yeah, I do that. But like, do you? <laughs> I know I have totally been guilty of reading, kind of skimming an email and then, oh, it gets my dander up. And then I'm just like, oh, let me hit reply and blah, 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 you know, and it's like, okay, take five, Allison, maybe take 60, <laughs> you know, like wait an hour. If it really doesn't require an immediate response, but it upset you, like let that thing marinate. And maybe this is a little embarrassing to admit, but I have gone back. I have paused, you know, and then calm down. And I go back and read the email that like sent me into the stratosphere and it actually did not say what I thought it said. And I'm just like, bullet dodged. Like, I am so glad I did not respond in the moment to that because I had misread it. So anyway, 
recognize like this is what I'm encouraging and I don't mean to be like a goody two shoes about it but if we could all commit to my mindset my first reaction is going to be I'm probably misunderstanding something if we could just like do that I think we would immediately improve our email persona so recognize there's a good chance and if you're like I don't like the word good okay there's a chance <laughs> you're misinterpreting the tone that the person meant when they typed it so before you damage yourself and others your relationship whatever ask the key here really is ask tactful questions so right so you could still let it sit but then instead of responding like you know i can't believe you would think i dot 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 or whatever say i'm not i want to make sure before i respond i want to make sure i'm understanding your concern are you saying dot, 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 and then wait for their response. And then they, you know, can clarify. Yes, I felt that you took too long, you know, to provide me the data for the annual report or what, or they could say, no, I'm not upset at all. I was just wondering whatever. And so I really think slowing down, asking questions is a, a best practice. Um, <laughs> yeah, Carl, I like that. You don't, even if you hit reply, you, you could still erase the recipient's name from the to field, right? So just in case you accidentally hit send, it does not go anywhere. Great advice. Yeah. Okay. Number two, copy people on messages only when something positive results from their involvement. And I'm using this as CC and BCC, folks. Somebody brought that up already. Totally agree. When a CC'd email will have a negative outcome for someone, find another way to communicate. And I, I that the advice that's on the screen is like stating the extreme, but I do think, you know, with BCC, we just have to ask ourselves, does this person need to hear me say, thank you, I'll keep that in mind or what? And I know I'm doing a tone, sorry, but you know, like so many BCCs don't need to be BCCs. And just really ask yourself, does everyone need to know this or should this just be a reply to the originator? All right. The last one is be your best in email. So ask yourself whether you'd be pleased to see your message, you know, on Twitter, on the news, on the front page of SACB, whatever. Think beyond the purpose of the email and ask yourself just, you know, am I presenting? Is this the best Allison, you know, um, Ruel, Shana, Laura, you know, is, is this the best I can be? And if not, then let it sit and come back and reframe the email. All right. So I have this quote, some, probably many of you, <clears throat> excuse me, just in our last couple of minutes. Many of you are probably familiar with Brene Brown. She's a professor. She's an author. She writes a lot about leadership and communication and a lot of topics. But I really think this quote is good for us thinking about our email behavior. So clear is kind. I think everyone would agree with that. Like when I take the time to be clear in my email, that's kind. I'm, I'm being emotionally intelligent about my recipient or recipients. I don't think most of us think the second sentence though. If I haven't taken the time to be clear. So if I'm unclear, it's not neutral. That's actually unkind to someone. And I, this, quote has helped me be like allison read that thing one more time and make sure i've removed all doubt you know ha have i not only been clear but is it unable to be misunderstood what i'm saying and that's really kind of taking our emailing behavior to the next level so we i don't think any of us want to be unkind so how can we be clear i have three tips here embrace bullet points and headings if you have a list in an email, it's likely it would benefit from being put in bullets. <clears throat> They're indented, you're creating white space, and then each item has its own real estate. And it's much easier to intake that information. So it could be action items, it could, you know, whatever, but just if there are two or three or four things, rather than just putting it in a sentence and separating it with commas, make it a bulleted list. And then, <laughs> Laura, respond like the receiver is your mom. That's good. Um, and then headings, 
let's say a client writes you with two questions. Um, rather, I'm admitting I have a bias. I do not like the see, see my answers below. To me, I just always go lazy. <laughs> so sorry if you don't like that, if that's a little judgy, but re, you know, cut and paste the original questions up in the body of your response. Or you can create headings. If they've asked you two questions, make a separate heading, bold it in your email, and then discuss the, you know, insert your response to those two questions. So it's exceedingly clear what you're doing. The next one is sound, take the time to write complete thoughts. It's very easy for our texting behavior to infiltrate our email behavior. Something I've noticed a lot of is these sentences that don't have subjects like thought you'd want to know this or, you know, it's like, I thought you want to know this. And I, I know that people fill in the blank, but it is an incomplete <laughs> sentence. And it's like that would have literally taken you like a nanosecond to put I and have a subject and, and not be so kind of cash about it. So write complete thoughts. And then my last piece of advice is think about moving the process forward. Here's the specific situation I'm describing as we wrap up. I'm sorry, I'm one minute over. If you give me one more minute, we'll be done. So you're asking yourself, what foreseeable questions can I answer now? So here's the scenario. Someone writes to me and says, Allison, are you available to meet at three o'clock today? And I write back politely, no, I'm sorry, I have another meeting at that time. And I hit send. Did I answer their question? Yes. Have I moved the process forward? No. Now that person has to write back, well, are there any other times you're available this week or next week? And then, you know, that ping pong, ping pong, ping pong. It is, it's obvious they want to meet with me. So when I write back and I say, no, I'm sorry, I'm already booked at three, I should say, if this is help, I should add on. If this is helpful, here are some other dates and times in the next three days that I do have available. Now you have cut down at least two emails out of that exchange. It's a beautiful thing. All right, so we're wrapping up. Be pitch perfect with your virtual communication. Our next full day session um, of which this was a part is on March 2nd. I hope to see you all there. Thanks so much for spending uh, your Friday with me and being gracious as I went two minutes over. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Just a reminder, this will be available on our website um, shortly. Check it out. Thank you. Thanks for all the comments in the chat. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Patty.